So welcome back, uh, everyone, and welcome to the uh, web app development track. Um, I will just before we get into the uh, we start with the topic of the of the day. I just wanted to uh, talk a, about the logistics for for this week for this week. Um, so we will meet um, again tomorrow at ten, uh, and then um, we will. Uh, take some like th yeah 30 minutes to review the material go over the logistics we'll have a 10 minute break and then we have two presentations uh, and 20 minute break in between and then after the after two presentations uh, for the week then we have prepared exercises for you uh, to work on uh, in groups in breakout room sessions and uh, some of these exercises will uh, use uh, code sandbox. Um, I shared the uh, the test link uh, on Slack, and um, yeah, and the facilitators or some some of us will come and and see if you if you need any help, any questions uh, on the exercises, and then we will uh, do a recap and, and closing. Uh, so today is the up runtime, the advanced uh, data queries and hooks. Uh, tomorrow is, um, uh, yeah, we'll talk about making apps, uh, DHS2 uh, applications generic and how to use those tools, uh, like translations and data store. And then day, uh, day three, we have performance and application security. This is a new topic. And um, yeah, the last day we have the app testing and app hub. And I will also go over some of the details about uh, the, the final project or project two. Uh, and by the way, I did receive, I saw that um, uh, most of you or yeah, some of you submitted your project, project one, and I will review those. Thank you so much for, uh, for doing that. I will be reviewing those um, uh, during the week and give you some feedback. Um, the project uh, two will contain um, most of the things that uh, most, most of the requirements for project one. So if you haven't uh, submitted project one, don't worry, uh, you can um, you can do uh, that um, for, for this workshop as well. Um, and it will be just uh, yeah expand, I guess, on, on, on some of the things that we uh, will cover this week. Um, and, uh, but I will go over the, the details uh, on, on Friday. Um, yeah, so today again, um, right now I'm just going to jump over to the, just to start, to get started. We'll have a break after my presentation and then uh, my colleague Kai will, will um, give uh, the second part of the presentation. We'll take a break. Uh, then we will introduce the exercises and then we will break into rooms and um, and then we'll be done for the day. Um, so with that, I think I will just go ahead and um, uh, and get started. I, I saw that I have, uh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so, um, what is the content for today? Uh, today we're going to talk about the up runtime. So more specifically um, about how to define advanced uh, queries and how to use the um, up runtime to uh, build a more robust application. Um, if you participate in workshop one, uh, there was an entire uh, session dedicated to this uh, topic and uh, Austin uh, gave a presentation uh, introducing the up runtime. Uh, and so it's highly recommended that you that you watch those recordings. Um, I showed you in the at the beginning of the um, yeah during the introduction. I showed you that the uh, where you can find those recordings uh, on the developer portal. Um, and yeah, anyway, um, I'm just going to yeah okay. So first, um, I will. I gave a quick review about data uh, queries and mutation. So most of the things that we already seen in workshop one, so I won't go into uh, much detail, um, but then the new uh, topic or the, yeah, is, is uh, handling loading and error states and how to refetch data, which we didn't cover uh, last time. 
And after the break, uh, my colleague Kai will uh, go over some more advanced topics such as dynamic queries and variables and how to define, define these queries, um, what lazy queries are, uh, async callbacks, and how to use the, uh, the data engine and uh, use alert uh, hook or the alert service. And uh, yeah, part three, I mentioned that, uh, we'll have the, uh, the exercises and the, the breakout room. So just about the exercises, um, yeah, I, I can, uh, sorry, I can just uh, talk about it uh, later. Um, okay, so with that, I'll get started uh, officially. <laughs> sorry uh, for all the logistics. Um, so, um, so first of all, what is the uh, purpose of using the app runtime? Uh, so the app runtime um, allows you to access the DHS2 uh, API uh, from a React application or a DHS2 platform application. Um, this means that uh, when you use the app runtime, um, you're basically talking to the DHS2 web API and interacting with the API. Um, and remember that the app runtime is included um, out of the box uh, with the application platform. So if you're using the DHS2 application platform, uh, you, you don't need to set this up again in your project. Um, but anyway, uh, the app runtime basically makes your life easier as an application developer in DHS2 uh, when you're interacting with the DHS2 um, API. And how does it do it? Um, so you do this uh, through uh, data queries and data queries are uh, declarative data requests and by declarative uh, we mean that you um, can make this request uh, by just telling what we want uh, uh, we want to get yeah instead of saying how um, to get those things um, so basically through these queries we can say exactly what uh, data we need uh, and the app runtime uh, will be responsible for uh, combining all those uh, needs that we are saying that we want and then requesting that uh, from the server and getting us back a result. So in, all, in other words, the, the app runtime uh, is in charge uh, of performing all these uh, steps to get us what we want, uh, which is great uh, as it does it uh, for you, uh, essentially. Um, I added a link to the documentation here, but um, I can show you where you can find uh, more information on the app runtime, just in case, uh, just very quickly. Um, yeah, sorry, you go to docs and then reference, we'll be adding more content to, to uh, this uh, uh, pages, but then you will see a link to the app runtime here. And this is where you can find all this. Um, yeah, the, the hooks and how to, to use um, this in your application. Um, and I will also talk a little bit about how to use the, um, I'm going to demonstrate something um, at the data play, uh, query playground, but then just uh, a little bit. Um, yeah, okay. So again, this is just a review from last time. Uh, so I'll just briefly mention uh, a few things. So as you see, um, the app runtime uh, uses a React uh, hook called use data query. Um, this is how you can import uh, this hook into your application. Um, if you're not familiar with React hooks, uh, we have shared a document with prerequisites and some resources that you can consult um, if you want to. And uh, yeah, so, but this is how you use the, um, the use data query hook. Uh, so um, you see that uh, this is, um, yeah, you use the use data query hook, sorry, inside um, a React functional component uh, by, by adding uh, this line there. Uh, so what's happening here is that um, this is uh, returning an object of four uh, properties. Um, and what this means is that uh, Basically, um, this line will re-render your component uh, every time that the, the state of that request changes. Um, so if the network request is in progress, 
it will tell you that you are in a loading state. If there was an error, you will get an error. Um, if the data was loaded, you will get data. And then uh, this is a refetch function that I'll talk a little bit more uh, later. And this is how you pass uh, your query. Um, and then you get some options that uh, uh, Kai will, um, will also cover. On the right uh, side here, we have a definition of a query. Uh, in this case, I added two resources, uh, indicators and data sets, uh, endpoints, uh, just to show you that the uh, app runtime allows you to make multiple uh, parallel requests uh, to the API at the exact uh, same time uh, in the same query, as you can see here. And you can pass this uh, to the uh, to the hook. Um, so I'll just show you how we can check this result using the uh, the data. Sorry, the yeah the data query playground, um, which is a DHS two application, um, and you can access uh, this through the documentation. You can see this uh, blue button here. You click there. Um, yeah, this, this is a DHS2 instance that we have provided uh, to you. We have shared uh, that information um, in some of the documents. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, show you this. So I, uh, yeah, okay. So if you have not seen this application before, this is how it looks like. On the left uh, left hand side, you can define your queries, um, and on the right, you can see the results uh, by uh, choosing uh, either query or mutation and executing it here. It's uh, pretty easy to use. Uh, it uses JSON, uh, so you will need to always use double quotes um, in uh, strings. Uh, so if we go ahead and execute this, um, you will see that. Um, we get the results of two resources uh, and it works perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, and I have saved here. You can just, uh, you can edit your query and it will save after. Uh, yeah, I just saved this before so you don't have to see me type. And uh, I will show you, I will show you this too. Uh, so it's, it's pretty handy and it's, it's pretty convenient when you want to test uh, or experiment with the data queries. Um, you go to, uh, yeah, you can use this tool um, and it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, okay. So then uh, we also have uh, use data mutation. Um, again, we did cover this, uh, maybe not in too much detail, uh, but uh, Data mutation is just a way to mutate or change information through the um, DHIS2 uh, web API. So basically queries um, are for reading information and mutations are for writing or changing that information. Uh, so if you're familiar with REST API, uh, you may know that we have post, put and delete. Um, so to create you, yes, to create something uh, that's a post request to update your foot request. Um, you also get, there's also a partial updates, partial updates uh, that's patched, but it only works, um, it's only supported in, uh, for some endpoints. So you would have to check the documentation to see, um, to see how to use that. So that basically means that if you only want to update a certain part of, um, um, of a field, for example, the name, then you would use this. Um, and then delete is for the delete uh, request. So yeah, so you usually will use this request to mutate something or write something through the data mutation hook. Uh, this is um, a way to do it in a declarative way. So similar to use uh, data query. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so again, similar to the, to the use data query uh, hook, you also import um, this hook uh, like this. Uh, you define your um, mutation here. This is a type create example. Um, 
And this is a little bit different from the use data query hook. Uh, this is actually, this is returning an array um, and mutate is the first um, uh, parameter here. And this is a function that you can use or that you can call within your component uh, to, um, to perform that mutation. Uh, you also pass the, your mutation uh, definition here. Um, and then you, you get the same um, uh, properties um, uh, like in use data query uh, loading error data and there's a uh, code as well. I'm not sure if Kai will cover that, but um, yeah, this is just a simple example. Um, sorry, uh, yeah, no, exa two exa simple examples of update and delete. Um, you call the resource, the, the type and uh, um, for update and delete, you would always need um, an ID. And for updates, you will need to uh, specify the, the fields. Um, again, I just prepared um, this, um, uh, this little, just to show you how to create, how to test uh, again. So you, you, you make a query, uh, you're sorry, you define a query. And in this case, use programs, we want to fetch the the five first uh, programs, we want to get the ID and the name. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and execute this. Um, now I want to create um, a program and I have uh, just uh, saved this here. Uh, it will be, uh, yeah, the name will be a new program. The type will be create, and then I have to choose mutation and hopefully it will work. Uh, it did, and then we get this result. You can see that it's, it's been created. Um, to know exactly if, uh, if it actually worked, uh, you would have to go back to your view program, uh, so to your data query, and, and then you will see that it shows here. Um, now, I wanted just to quickly show you how you can delete, um, how you can delete this uh, resource. Uh, that we just created. Uh, so the type will be delete and the ID will be, I, sorry, um, the ID that I, I copied. Um, so uh, it works, uh, we get um, uh, 200 uh, status code. So it worked, it, it deleted, and we it, once I execute this again, we should be able uh, to not see it. <laughs> uh, so now it's gone. Um, to update, uh, yeah, To I'm just going to go ahead and, and create um, the same program again just to show you that we actually have to, um, yeah. So I'm going to update this, this new one here. Um, so instead of delete, will be updates. I'm just going to paste uh, the, um, the ID of that. And for, um, for updates, we need uh, this data here. Um, so we, did, we do need to pass this uh, data and the fields, uh, otherwise it won't work. So let's just make a change uh, like a, uh, an, another program and execute this and see if it shows um, another program here. Uh, so yeah, so this is, um, yeah, just just uh, simple simple examples of how you can uh, you can use uh, uh, use data um, mutation. Okay, so this is a new content uh, that we didn't see in workshop uh, uh, one, and it will cover uh, some of more advanced uh, data query features. Um, when you use the uh, data query hook, you get a few things back in the uh, in the object that's returned by, by the hook. Uh, so one is um, loading um, error and data uh, variables. 
Um, so what's happening here is that React will call this function um, uh, multiple times. So the use data query hook uh, can tell React to call your function again with different responses. Um, so every time this function is called, uh, these variables, uh, loading error and, and data, are going to have a specific value. Um, so the first time it's called is going to have loading, um, which will be set to true. I will show you uh, in the next slide. And the second time it's called, it might throw an error or return the actual um, data. So the first, what what's yeah what's happening here? Um, in the, the first time our component uh, renders or on mount, um, loading is um, uh, set to true. So this means that the first time we make an HTTP request to the D uh, DHS2 instance, for, uh, for example, and um, send our query, uh, the result is that we've started a query, but we haven't received uh, a response yet. So we don't know if it's an error or data or anything at this point. Um, so yes, the, the, it is loading and that's why it's true. And uh, yeah, loading is a Boolean variable um, that, um, that shows the first time it renders and the error and the data will be undefined because like I said, uh, we didn't get um, a, a response yet. Um, the second time it, um, the component renders, we have two options. Uh, we either get an error or we get uh, the data. So this is an example of what happens if we do get an error. Um, the um, loading variable will be uh, false and the error will uh, be, um, yeah, we show, we have a, a string and the error, uh, sorry, the string of the error message and data will be undefined because of course we, um, there, there was an error there. Um, if we didn't get an error, um, then the, uh, the data is actually loaded, of course, and we call this uh, function uh, the, the second time with, um, sorry, so the, I, the variables are, um, the, yeah, loading is, is set to, uh, to false, the error is undefined, and we do actually get the result uh, from uh, that API request here. Um, I just wanted to actually, I prepared this little uh, application. I think it's running just to show you how, to show you the, the, the first render and the second and what happens. Um, so this is uh, my code here um, for this application. We have um, an H1 um, tag and it's conditionally rendering um, this, uh, this component. So if we get an error, then we will show an error in the inside the H1, uh, or uh, if it's loading, we will see that. And if not, then the data. Um, so if I refresh the page, I don't know if you can see loading first. I think this is, is too fast. <laughs> so I'm just going to um, show you in uh, the first time it renders and what happens and what do you see? Uh, it would say loading and then the data because uh, we didn't get an error. But we, if we do uh, cost <laughs> to, to make an error, um, we should now see loading and um, after that, the error. Yeah, the message of the error. Um, yes. I hope this was a bit clear. Um, this is my last uh, slide. Um, one of the advanced uh, data query features is the possibility to refetch data. So um, as I mentioned, we can have um, yeah, loading error and data result from the uh, use data query hook, but uh, that only requests the data once. Uh, so that means that if you load a page with that component, um, as soon as that component is displayed, it will uh, load the data from the DHIS2 instance. Um, and then you either get the data or an error 
as we saw before. Uh, but once that's done, it's done. <laughs> and then it won't try to load the information again. So if the data changes on the, on the instance or you added a mutation type uh, create, for example, then you, you would need to refetch, uh, sorry, refresh, not refetch, refresh your, your browser in order to get uh, that new information um, uh, rendered. And uh, if you get an error, for example, you won't uh, automatically retry to load. So here comes uh, refetch. Um, and uh, this is uh, which, yeah, which has the, the behavior of updating that information after the first uh, load has completed. Um, so as the name says, uh, it refetches the data. Um, as you can see, that's the fourth property of the object that's returned. Um, and refetches, uh, sorry, refetch is a, is a function that you can call anywhere in your application. Um, yeah, so as you can see in this example, um, we have the button um, uh, component here and we pass the, the, the refetch function to the onClick um, event handler. So this will trigger, um, when we click uh, the button, it will trigger uh, the function and it will refetch the data that we are requesting, which is, which in this case, um, in, in my application, data application is that we're refetching, uh, we want to refetch the resource mean. Um, and here you can see that, I, I have to go back to, sorry about that. Okay. So when you click the, the, the button reload, uh, we are refetching the data basically. Um, so this is not uh, so interesting, but we will see during the exercises when you can actually use um, refetch for, for more, uh, for other use cases, like when you create uh, something, um, uh, when, yeah, when you create a new resource, um, then you would need to refetch the data to show to show it again, or when you're deleting, um, to uh, to uh, yeah refetch the data uh, from the from the instance. Um, this is what I have. Um, this is what I have uh, for today. I, I mean, on my, my side, um, I don't know if you have any questions. Um, Feel free to uh, feel free to unmute yourselves or. Good. Thank you. Okay. Embrace the All right. So I'll be talking a little bit about uh, some other features of the app runtime that make it really flexible and useful in a lot of different scenarios. Um, some of those are making the queries and mutations dynamic. So you can um, supply variables to the queries so that you can use them in different contexts and they can apply to different resources or uh, different situations different features for um, when you trigger the, the queries and mutations using uh, the lazy option or not. And um, let's see, what's the other thing? Some asynchronous callbacks. So you can uh, set up functions that trigger when a query or mutation is complete or if it runs into an error. You can also um, use a more advanced tool, the data engine to have more control over the, the query mechanics if, um, you need a, a particular control flow in your application. And then lastly, uh, I'll talk about the use alert service or the hook that provides the alert service um, that makes useful uh, alerts for your application to show um, valuable information and is sometimes a useful thing to, uh, to use as like an error callback, like I mentioned a moment ago. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Um, so the first thing is making the queries and mutations dynamic. So uh, previously we've shown a few ways of using static queries where the query object is defined using 
literal strings and objects. Um, but to make it more flexible and to use them in different situations, we can set up the queries to receive variables uh, when they're executed. And so a few of the properties that we can use in the queries that are dynamic are the ID property, as you can see here, um, the params property. And so you can change things like filters, page size, what page you're looking at, um, what fields you're looking at, go under the params category, and the data property, which you use for mutations. So you can uh, shape the, um, the data that you're sending to maybe a create or update mutation using those variables. And so you can see here in this example, the ID property, previously we used a string to identify a resource here. But instead of using a string, we're using a function that will return a string. And so the, the query object can take either a string or a function like this. And so you can see in this uh, syntax here, we have an arrow function that receives um, an argument and it destructures the ID property from that argument and returns the ID string. So the next thing that you need to do to make a query uh, dynamic is to supply that ID variable when it's executed. So we can see more examples here, uh, including both the ID and the params uh, property being dynamic. So you can see here we have just a, a literal ID, the one, two, three here. And then the dynamic one, we have this function that returns an ID. Likewise for the params property, here we just have a, a literal object. And in the dynamic one, we have a function that uh, receives an argument and returns an object here. This is the arrow function syntax that um, doesn't do any logic, but just returns a fun uh, an object. Um, you can add additional logic here to process arguments in some way that you want, just as long as it returns an object with the params that you want in a similar kind of form as this one here. So to pass variables to these queries that have been set up to be dynamic, we have two options. One is in the, uh, the options argument of the data use data query hook. Deborah mentioned that briefly earlier. earlier. Um, what that looks like is when you use the use data query hook, the first argument is the query. And the second, the second argument is this object here. And we want a variables property in that object that supplies those, uh, those values that we want those, uh, that dynamic query to receive. So I'll just go back a slide to see you, uh, the ID and the name properties are supplied in variables here. And if we go back here, we can see the ID and the name variables are received here. The other way is in the refetch function that Deborah mentioned a moment ago. You can supply those variables in here. Instead of, instead of using uh, an object with a variable's property, you just use the variable's object here. So you can supply the ID and the name. Again, those are supplied to the, the dynamic query. These are useful in different situations. Like if you're receiving a value from the components properties, uh, it's useful to add that to the variables here. But if there's something like you have some state that you're tracking in the component, it's usually more often that you would add those variables in the refetch function like this. There are some other options for the timing of the, the queries and mutations. By default, queries will trigger immediately when the component first loads. Um, and mutations will wait until the mutate function is called to execute. But you can change up that timing. And that's, uh, that's modified by the lazy property. 
that you can set in the in the options object here. So uh, by default, queries are not lazy, and lazy is false. But if you set lazy to true, it won't trigger right when the component loads. Um, and you can track whether it's been called or not with the called uh, variable that gets returned by the use data query um, hook. So what that would look like is when you load this component, nothing would be there. Called is false. And so when you get to this render function, called is false. And so you would render click the load button. When you trigger the refetch, then the query is executed. And you go through the same loading error and uh, success or uh, data fulfilled states that you that you normally go through if it's not lazy. So that can be useful in some circumstances. Mutations are lazy by default, although I think you can set them to be not lazy, although that's a, a, a very unusual circumstance that you would want a mutation to trigger right when a component loads. And then the, the next feature that's really useful are some asynchronous callbacks that trigger in response to success or failure of a query or a mutation. Again, these go in the options object for the data query or mutation hook. And uh, the on error, if you supply an on error function as a property of that options object, it will receive uh, an error argument and you can execute some kind of function when that query fails. Likewise, you can supply an oncomplete function that will receive uh, the data from the successful query and you can process that data in some way. So those, those several features are really useful in making these queries and mutations flexible and useful in a lot of different scenarios, um, being able to choose when they trigger or uh, what happens when they're done and what variables they're supplied with. Uh, but in the, in the circumstances that those don't completely cover all of, all of your use cases or if you have some specific control flow needs in uh, your application, there is the option to use the data engine. This is a bit more of an advanced feature that probably you won't need in many situations. It would be unusual to need it. So I'll just cover it quickly and just mention that this is an option that's available. Instead of adding these queries and mutations integrated in the React component lifecycle, um, you can do a more you can use a more imperative interface for the data engine to trigger a query and mutation imperatively um, and handle data that way. The interface is quite similar to the, uh, the hooks in that <clears throat> you have this engine object that has methods query and mutate. They both receive uh, the query or mutation object as their first argument and then some options where you can supply variables or on complete and on error functions. But instead of integrating in the React lifecycle, um, they return a promise. So you can use it in a more uh, imperative situation or outside of the, the context of a React component um, and control the, the flow of data in that way. So I'm going to take a brief pause here to go to a live demo to show some of these features in action. I have a, a demo set up that you'll be able to find in the repository here when you look at the Academy workshop. On day one, you can find the advanced runtime demo. The, the final version of the code that I'll be working on will be in there for you to browse and use as inspiration. 
but I'll just give you a little tour of what the, um, the project looks like right now. So right now we have this little list that queries visualizations from the DHIS2 server, um, makes a list out of their names, has some buttons here to glamorize the names and an option to refetch that data here. What the app looks like right now is um, just a simple heading and this list component here. Right now I have the prop of the list size for this component set to 10. Oh, by the way, this is, a, this is an app that was initialized using D2 app scripts init. So uh, bootstrapped using the DHIS2 app platform. And uh, so here's the app structure, the visualiz visualizations list. Right now, just runs a simple query for visualizations from the database. It requests a page size of five items. Uh, it requests these fields from each data. It uses this query here where we'll add some other features. There is some logic here to handle the different loading states, error state, not called state, and data successfully loaded circumstance. And when the data is loaded, it uh, renders a list of these visualization list item components which we'll set up to perform, uh, that includes this, this name and this button. So we'll wanna set up some interesting logic for the, the mutation that will, that will add emojis to the name of this visualization and uh, reload this list with the, the newly mutated name. So here we have some, uh, some to-do items set up. We can see we have this placeholder mutation object ready to be updated. We have uh, this use mutation hooks that will add some success and failure callbacks to. Um, we'll also add, we'll execute the mutation dynamically using variables related to um, the visualization ID and name. Uh, here you can see that we'll refetch this list. So this is um, this is the refetch function for this list that gets passed in as a prop of this component. And here's just a little bit of a render function for this list item and um, the button that will trigger this add emoji function. So we'll start with the visualizations list to make this query dynamic. I mentioned previously that uh, there's this list size prop that, that it receives from the app. And so the first thing that we wanna do is make this list size here respond to that value that it gets passed to, that it gets passed. So first thing that we'll do is set up the, the query to be dynamic. And so instead of returning this object here, we will return, uh, we will pass a function that re returns an object. So we'll start by setting up the arguments. We'll receive page size and set up uh, an arrow function that returns an object. And so the page size that we'll query will come from the variable that we have there. Next thing that we need to do is pass those variables to that query. So what, what we'll do down here, I just gotta move that around. Uh, what we'll do down here is set up a variables property in this options object of the query to pass that page size. So that will be what we want the query to receive is page size. And that will be equal to the list size that gets passed in as a property here. So hopefully we can see the result here 
the app is passing a list size of 10. And now we are supplying 10 as the variable here to this dynamic query, and we're getting this longer list now. So that's a success. Now I'll show you what it looks like to use a lazy query. If you set the lazy option in this object to true. And we reload this page. You can see that we run into the not yet called state here. So called in this variable that's returned from the use data query hook is false. And so we render this information here. What we can do is click this button that triggers refetch and we'll get the list. So that's what a lazy query looks like. There are some situations where that's useful to use. I think we'll let this be false for now while we're working on it. And so now our list is pretty nice and we have the, the 10 list items here. Now we want to set up the add emoji button so that we can glamorize our uh, visualization names by going into the visualization list items. The first thing that we need to do is set up the, the mutation that will uh, send an update uh, request to update this visualization item. So here we have a button that will trigger the add emoji function that will trigger this mutation. So first let's set up the mutation so that we can receive the right um, ID for this visualization and then send the right data to it. So for the ID in this mutation, instead of returning this, this literal value, we'll use a function to return an ID. So that will look like ID. Or a function that returns an ID. And we want our data to be dynamic. And so we'll set up a function that returns a data object. So we want a name and a type for this visualization. Type is a required value when you're updating a visualization and name is, is how we're gonna um, adjust the, the, the name with new emojis. So now this mutation can receive variables. The next thing that we want to do is set up this mutation to use variables. Um, what we'll actually be doing is be doing, we'll be sending the variables in the mutate function down here. So we won't have to do anything yet with the use mutation hook. And instead we'll go down here. We'll trigger the mutation when someone clicks on this button and triggers the add emoji. But we want to pass the variables here. So we want to send ID is equal to this visualization object that we receive as a prop dot ID. The type of the visualization will be the same type as before. And then the name will be this new name that we set up using the, the previous name with some new emojis. And just for fun, we'll, we'll log the response. So now we can try that out and see if our add emoji button works. So we can go to this one, click on that. Nothing happened. This is always fun to debug live. Let's check our network here. Four oh three. Don't have proper permissions, but sometimes this gets fixed just by reloading it.
Hmm. Still don't have proper permissions. Always funny to get a problem that you didn't have last night. Well, what we can see is the, that we are sending the right uh, request to the server at the right endpoint. Maybe if I log in again using the system. Oh well. This gives us gives us an opportunity to implement the uh, success and failure callbacks to give us a, some notification of what exactly went wrong here. So we can go to the mutation hook here. And in the options, we can add the on complete function in the options that receives some response. And we can make a message. Yes. And then we can write out a little bit of information from uh, the response that we got. And right now, we'll just use uh, an alert message or an alert function. And we can make it non error. Callback message will be, oops, something went wrong. Let's air dot message. So now that we can see, hopefully, <laughs> that when we load this, and trigger this, we see that there is an error state or an error result in that mutation. And so this callback gets called, uh, an error gets passed to it, and we can add that error to the message. The last thing, Well, you can see that this would be the result if the uh, if I had the right permissions to do that mutation. Let me think if there's anything else that I want to try to debug that. I could look up the. Uh, system credentials, but I don't want to put the credentials on screen here. Um, so for now, we're just going to have to work with that error that comes from the mutation, even though the mutation is well formed. Let's try. Um, okay, yeah, so that's that wraps it up for these features here. The success and failure callbacks are working, we have this dynamic mutation. Uh, we send the variables using this variables object in the mutation. When we mutate and we refetch this list when it's successful. The last thing that I'll talk about in the slides here is using the alert service to send useful messages to the client. Um, and this is a useful thing to pair with um, the success and failure callbacks with those mutations. So what the syntax looks like for that is there's a use alert hook that's provided that takes uh, a message that it will send and a number, uh, an options object with a number of options that you can provide to customize the alert. 
and it returns a show function that when it's called, will show this alert bar on the screen to show that message. It will pop up from the bottom. Um, it's a nice looking UI feature that's useful to use in your app and a great way to convey a message to uh, users when something happens. And so it would look like this to implement it in a simple way. In your functional component, you set up the hook to receive the, the show function. When you use alert and you provide a message here. And in the options object, you can provide a duration. And in this case, it's 3000 milliseconds. So three seconds long that it'll uh, last on the screen. And later you can show the alert by triggering this show function. And what that'll do is it'll trigger this alert to pop up on the screen and it'll last for three seconds, depending on this uh, duration here. And it'll show this message. I can show you what an alert bar looks like. So you know what we're talking about here. In the documentation here, you can find this in the app runtime, but we'll skip ahead to this page in the UI documentation because the, the alert bar is a UI object. It lives in the library. And when it pops up, it looks like this. By default, it has this black appearance with the info symbol on the left, and it will hide after a certain duration. You can scroll down on this page to see what some other alert bars and their options look like. For example, a success state, warning, critical, and the default appearance. Some things will auto hide. Um, particular states change their duration by default and will not auto hide unless you tell them to. And you can add actions that will trigger functions um, when you click on them. And so those are the options that you can pass to that options object here when you use your alert. And they can be even more flexible by being dynamic, much like the queries and mutations can be. So again, instead of supplying, uh, if you take a look at this use alert hook here, instead of supplying a string for the message, you can supply a function that returns a string. Likewise, for the variables object or the options object, instead of providing the literal object, you can provide a function that returns an object. And to supply variables to those functions, you pass them in the show uh, when you call the show function here. And so you can see this one takes the username uh, and adds that. This one takes is current user. And so when you call the show function, you can supply username and is current user as, as part of this variables object. And it will customize the alert in that way. And so say Hendrik is the current user. Um, when this show is called, the message will be successfully deleted Hendrik and is current user is true. So, the critical true object would be supplied as the options object. And so you would get an alert bar with that red critical appearance that we looked at a moment ago. So to show the alerts in action, we'll go back to the demo. And we can nicely show an alert of not having the right permissions to send that mutation. So we set up the alert hook by going const show equals use alert. Um, we will, oh, let me take a peek at my cheat sheet. Oh, actually, I don't think I need to. We will make it dynamic. And so we want the message to be a message that will supply to it. And the, um, We want to customize the status here. And so we'll take a status object. Um, if status 
or the status variable, the status equals success. Return success, true. That will be the variables object. If status equals error, return. The option that we would supply to the alert bar would be critical as the appearance. Um, otherwise, we just return an empty object. And so we can improve our uh, reporting down here in the on, on complete and on error callbacks by using this show function to show these nice alerts. And so instead of using the default alert, API, we'll do show uh, message is this message that we've supplied that we've made just now and status would be success in the case of on complete. Likewise for on error, we would use show message is the message that we made above and status is error. So now what that looks like, when we go back to the app, when we try to add an emoji, aha, we had success that time. We can see that we get this green successful alert message with a, a message that we've written and it looks good. Um, let's see, if it were an error, it would look red with that red critical appearance that we saw. And it would show the message, oops, something went wrong. And um, maybe I can show that by messing up the resource. I can do that, reload the page. When we try to add emojis, we get the error. So that's what these alert, bar look, alert bars look like and, and how you use them. That's great. That's it for this demo here. You can look at the finished product by going to um, the App Dev Academy and in the workshop two and day one, you can look at the runtime demo and you can find the finished code here in visualizations list and, and list item. So you can take a look and browse that and see the, the alert, the success callbacks, the mutation with variables, and that might be a useful resource to look at. The last thing that I'll show are just a, a quick tour of some of the resources that you have available to remind yourself of the syntax for these, uh, the data query hooks and the use alert. So you can look at the app runtime documentation. These are linked in the, in the slides here and also in the advanced runtime. I guess I'll follow the links here. You can see the app runtime docs. When we open that up, you can look at the use data query option uh, documentation. And so you can look at the, what the options are that you can supply. And you can look at the different things that the query returns here. So you can see called, loading, error data, refetch, and engine. The data mutation is similar. Use data engine has a brief mention of how to use that. And then you can look at use alert here to look at the options that you can supply to use alert and how you can use the show function. That's all for me.